Good morning, good morning, good morning, everybody. Hey, Suggle. It is Monday, everybody. Yes, it is. May I have just a little more, Jesus? Make me over Monday. Yes, make me over Monday. And as y'all can see, the girl needs to make over. Mm hmm. Yes. Mm hmm. So I am up. Um, I am getting ready to wash my hair. I have some samples from the beauty supply store that I thought I would try. This one is called Main Selection. It's a shampoo and it is the moisturizing conditioner. And I have six of these. I'm only going to use probably two of each. Or maybe just I'll start with just one of each and see how it goes. It says the shampoo gently cleanses for all hair types, fortified with moisturizers, create soft and shiny hair. Okay. So I'm going to try that on my hair. I also am going to try this mask on my face. My pores on this side, as you can see, are really, really big. I washed my face. This side is not as bad, but this side right here, and it's my fault because I've been going to sleep with my makeup on. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, I can't fault anybody for what is going on with my skin. I have to fault me. And um, I have these other shampoo samples that I want to try. This is Black Jamaican Casserole Moisture Growth Shampoo. And um, I have two of those, so I'm not sure if I'm going to use one of these. Um, I have this Moroccan Argan Oil. Now, and this is Roots Therapy, Revitalizing Shampoo. Now, I have tried a lot of things with Moroccan Argan Oil in it, and some of them, mm -mm, can't stand the smell. Can't stand the smell. So, um, I am going to use this one. When I wash my hair, I wash my hair with a clarifying shampoo first, and then I go in with a um, some type of moisture, uh, uh, moisturizing shampoo, okay? So, I'm going to see which one I'm going to use this morning. And, you guys, I'm going to give you an update. Now, it may not look like it to you guys, but I can see a difference in my edges. It is starting to look a little more full and not so sparse look at right here i mean i can i mean i can see a difference that my hair is growing you really looking at it you could tell that the hair is is not thick up there but it's not as mm, i don't know the word to use but it's growing and i have been using um for what is it? Two weeks now? Two or three weeks? I've been using the um, Jachet oil and smoothie. I spray it on my hair um, sometimes two three times a week. Even with myself with the Jachet oil and I'm going to have to order some more because I got a little small bottle and I've been using it on my girl's hair. But when I tell y'all my hair may look like it's fried. But when I tell y'all my hair is so soft, it is straight up ridiculous. Oh my word. It is so soft that to the point I don't even want to wash it because I'm scared I'm going to go mess it up. I don't know. And I've had my hair braided up for um a week and a half. See how thick that is? Oh. And my ends don't look fine like they were. Because I put the um the Jache oil all over my hair, parted it and sprayed it in each part, and I actually worked it in and put some on my hair and I used the smoothie um as well. And I also put some uh lustrous pink oil moisturizer on it too. And um yeah, you can tell the difference. I mean, I can tell the difference if nobody can't. I'm literally my hair feels so so soft, it is ridiculous. So, um, my scalp itches an awful lot, and you know, anytime I moisturize my hair, it itches. Even when I braid my hair, you guys, my scalp is tingling and itching real bad. Why? I have no idea. But, um, 
yeah and I know when I wash it it's gonna get really really thick because what I did um I flat ironed my hair uh two weeks ago and this is why it's not as I mean seriously because I flat ironed it and Mm -mm. Excuse me, y'all. I had a moment. I'm listening at Creflo Dollar. He has a show on, and he's talking to a young lady. I'm gonna put this mask on my face while I'm sitting here. Um, he's talking to a lady who was abused. She watched her dad kill her mother. Well, he beat his he beat her mother, and she said the next time she saw her mother again, she was in a casket. And so after that, he he began to sexually abuse her for so many years. And she was on there talking about it. And she was just saying that, you know, at this point, she don't hold it against her dad. And it was her birth father that did it to her. And she don't hold it against him. She forgive him. And I know so many people may be out there going through some type of abuse. And we don't understand it. And I know a lot of people go through it. I'm not going to even put it on one particular race. But the way you talk to people is a, is a form of abuse, you guys. It's not just because you may not be hitting somebody. But the way that you talk to them and demean them and things like that. It's called verbal abuse. And people don't feel like that words can hurt. Words do hurt. Yes, they do. Yes, they do. Because if it didn't, when somebody looked at you or say something to you wrong, you wouldn't get angry if words didn't hurt you. Point blanket like period. People say, oh, I ain't so what you say. If you ain't said then you don't have the, a reason to respond. You know, you wouldn't talk about it. You just let it go and go on about your business. You know, but words do hurt and until you realize that it'll be a change in the world when everybody realize that words do hurt and that it's not about what we think and 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 this is not coming from me because i've read it in the bible and mm -hmm. he say yeah look it up for yourself i don't even have to tell you what it say but words do hurt they do and the words that you speak about somebody can change somebody's life. So I have to leave this on my face for 15 minutes. Make sure I got enough on there. Now, to be able to do this, you know, a lot of people, and me, myself, I have been one that worried about the way I look because I always was mistreated, you know, by kids. They never called me ugly, but um, I just, for my whole life, I just couldn't understand why I couldn't keep friends, you know. They would be my friend, but at some point, they'd be like, well, I'm tired of her. You know what I mean? Um, and it would it would be like that for a while, and then all of a sudden they'll come back later on. And it did something to me. I guess not just that, but me knowing that um, I was adopted. <laughs> There's nothing wrong with being adopted, but for me to sit back and watch my parents go about their life and I not be a part of it. I didn't realize that I was in the right place, you know, that God had did it. He took me out of that environment for a reason. Um, and I didn't realize that until I became an adult. And, you know, I let it hold me back from doing a lot of things. I let it make me um, not believe in myself, wonder why and what did I do wrong? What was so wrong about me? 
um, that I can't have friends. I mean, I would have, when I say friends, I mean, I would have somebody, you know how people call you and they talk to you and then all of a sudden they're just not there no more. And I understand um, that people are in your life for a season. But some people have friends for for a lifetime. I've never had a friend for a lifetime. Well, my husband. And I can't use him as an example because I'm talking about a female friend. You know, one that you just stay close to and is always there. And I've never had that. Even uh, my best friend growing up, you know, and then, you know, the Lord, I ain't going to say the Lord, but it came to me this morning. It was like, you have to do your part. You have to put forth the effort. And I have, and it's always, I've always felt like I was forcing myself on people. And so now I get to the point where I withdraw. I close myself off. You know, if, if somebody want to talk to me, they'll call me because I feel like, um, like I said, I feel like I'm forcing myself to be a part of somebody's life. And I don't want to do that. I don't want to do that. And. If that means that I never have um, that type of friendship that I feel like I am missing in a female, oh well. I know I'll make it through. It may not feel good, but I'll make it through, you know. Um, but to have, you know, your father molest you like that you know you you have to look at it you can't blame yourself for one anybody if you've ever been molested you can't blame yourself because it's by personal choice of the person that's doing it um seek help even when they tell you that they don't want you to say anything you know Tell somebody. Tell somebody. And I know a lot of times, you know, people that are in that situation tell somebody, but then they still, somehow they still don't believe them. And, um, in a case like that, continue to tell somebody. And I know that when you do that, sometimes, it makes it harder on you. I just wish that it was in every state a phone number that you could call and you be removed until there's a serious investigation. And I mean serious investigation to the point where you go to the doctor. There has to be some type of evidence that this person is abusing you. And that you are removed from the home. You know. I. Sometimes it's like. Why say anything? Because you feel like there's nothing going to be done. Why? Why say anything? Because they keep putting you back into the same situation. Over and over and over again. Always. Have hope. And trust the Lord. I know that it's not easy going through that. But I pray that God can help. That is not something that anybody wants to live their life going through being abused. Whether it's physically, mentally, or emotionally. But one thing is, it's a part of life. And we can make it through life. We can make it through anything. He didn't say that every day would be a bed of roses. But he said that he would always be with us. No matter what. And try your best not to do anything to hurt somebody else. You know what I mean? Try not to be that negative, um, that negativity in somebody else's life if you can. And it's easy to say, but when you have children, people, or I'm not going to just say children, but people that have been abused all their life, it's not easy. It's not easy. Because you don't really know that you have a problem. You don't know what the problem is. You can't see the problem at that moment. You know, 
all you know is that you're just going through life. You have some feelings and you don't know how to deal with it sometimes. Ooh. Ooh, can you say nothing? I just want to encourage anybody out there that's in any type of abusive relationship. Um, seek help. I can't tell you where to go. I can't tell you that um, things will happen immediately. But seek help. Talk to God about it. And I know people can say, well, I have been praying. Don't stop praying because your help will come. If you can try to get away, get away. There's a song, Lord, make me over, make me over again. I like that. And it is make me over Monday. We went through a lot of things, and I'm not going to just say we, you know, people may have gone through a lot of things this weekend. They have had a lot of things last week to happen in their life. Um, but what a blessing it is to be alive this morning. What a blessing it is to have been able to get out of bed one more time. Thank you, Lord. You don't know, you just don't know what the week holds, what today holds, what the next hour holds. But God, I just thank you. Thank you, God. Actually, I ask you to be with each and every person watching this video. Give them the desires of their heart today, as long as it lines up with your word. Trust them, y'all. Trust them. I know I'm all over the place, and I had to reel myself back in when I started talking about certain things about, you know, me going up. I had to reel myself back in because I've talked about that before, and it didn't destroy me. No, it didn't. Um, I am here. I am not a mistake. I know a lot of things may have happened. That were wrong choices on a lot of people's part. Um, but within those choices, God still had a plan. He chose every situation to do something in my life. And my wish is for my children to live the best life possible. For them to never feel like they are not loved. For them to never feel alone. For them to never. I know they'll be sad. You know what I mean? Sometimes things happen. But I just don't want that for my children. I want to be the mother that God has created me to be. I pray that he show me my weaknesses. And to help me to be better and to build upon that so that I can live out my days being the best mother possible. That is my wish, to be the best friend that I can be to whomever it is that God is guiding me to. Oftentimes, you can feel like a third wheel in situation. And I have felt that way. Often you can um, be led in the direction of people that make you uncomfortable. And sometimes you can be led in the direction of people where you get too comfortable. And God will stir things up. Because he has a better plan than the one that is before you. And that is a hard thing for me. Because I like comfortable. 
I like being comfortable. I don't want to get stagnant, but I like being comfortable. I like being feeling secure. I like feeling um a sense of love and want to be wanted. I don't think it's a person on earth that don't. But I don't want it to be with wrong intentions. You know what I mean? I don't want it to be, I don't want to put people on a pedestal to actually define me or help me to be who this image of um, who I think I should be. Oh, my stomach fell. And a lot of times we get, I'm trying to use my words wisely, y'all, for real. Get to the point to where Feelings manifest in your life that you've never felt before. And choosing the way to handle it is not an easy thing when you don't really recognize what the problem is or how you got there. But I know that I can call on Jesus and I can tell him my problem. I can tell him about the feelings that I'm having that I'm not used to having and I know it's not right. Um, cause he says, be anxious for nothing. Okay. Be anxious for nothing. And I don't have to be anxious. I don't have to be covetous of, of over anything and anybody else. Um, I don't have to be envious. I don't have to be jealous. I don't have to be any of that. Wrong number. Ooh, that water hot. We're sitting up under this lamp. You know? So, anybody that's out there who may not be um, at the point in their life that they feel like they need to be or they want to be, just hold on. Um, people that are lonely, people that, that are in relationships that are not um, healthy, um, I just pray that God help you in any way that he sees fit. He knows more of what you need than I do. So I just ask God to have his way to meet your needs, to send you peace, comfort, just lighten your load. I pray that you always have a song of praise. And when I say a song of praise, be able to praise your way through, no matter how you feel. To thank God about everything that you're going through. Because we know that we got to understand that every situation, God is in it. We got to find the good. We got to find the silver lining. Meaning, if you... I hate to put it this way, but if you're in a bad situation, meaning like your marriage is not going right, maybe, you know, your husband may be cheating, that's the worst feeling that you ever want to feel, you know, like you're not good enough for that person. But always know that it's by choice that things are happening. It's not about because you made somebody feel a certain type of way that made them do this. No, it's because they gave into their feelings. Feelings of the flesh. And that's what the Lord tells us. Our flesh will lead us. And I'm paraphrasing. He will lead us down a path that we don't want to go. Our flesh will lead us down a path that we don't want to go. We have to die to self. Because sometimes when your relationship may not be. Um, you might have some things going on in your relationship. And. You know you feel like. Oh I don't have to deal with this. I don't have to put over this. 
or he or she should be glad that they have me. But then you got the devil sending somebody that's going to look at you a certain way. Say the things that you need, that you feel like you need to hear and that you want to hear. Stroke your ego. Whisper those sweet nothings in your ear to encourage you that you don't have to be in that situation. That that person is not good for you, you know. And you're sitting there because you're already feeling some things. And now they're saying these things on top of that. And you're getting more and more comfortable with this conversation. You have now committed adultery. He didn't say that adultery was an intimate act, meaning sexual. It's when you put yourself. Hey, boo. Good morning. Double pee pee. You um messed up when you started conversating in an intimate way, meaning telling your personal secrets to the opposite sex, somebody that is not your wife or your husband. That's when the betrayal begins. Um, when they, the devil, you know, the devil know your weaknesses. He already know. Because if you don't have a conversation, this, that, and the other with your significant other, and he's listening, he's sitting back listening, he is, he's waiting to stroke your ego. He is sending all this temptation your way. But we in the flesh, we don't see that. We see that, okay, we know that, okay, I don't have no business talking to this person because I'm in a committed relationship, whether I'm married or whether I'm dating somebody. But I have always said my whole life, try. If you can, in any relationship, if you feel as though your feelings are changing to the point that you cannot respect the person that you're with, you cannot put their feelings first, it is time to go. And I, the reason I say that is because when you, this is me, when you enter into that type of relationship, you're conversating with somebody else that is not your partner. I know it's possible, but at some point, think about it. Do you think about the person that you're with when you're talking to this person, looking at this person? You know, you do you. If you cannot do that, think about that person at that moment. It's time to go. Something about them should come up and you'd be like, I don't want to hurt. I don't want to hurt them. I'm going to have to get out of this situation. I'm going to have to move away from this because I'm getting ready to do something that I know that I should not do. And I'm not an expert on relationships, but I am. I have had my feelings hurt. I have been cheated on. Um, I have gone through a lot of things. I have gone through verbal abuse. I have gone through um, some physical abuse. Um, I have gone through emotional abuse. And if you don't know what those things are, I'm going to need you to Google them. Yes, Google them. Google will tell you a whole lot of things. It will give you different places where you can go and get information about these things and how you deal with it, um, how you identify with it. How you recognize it, how you change it, how you come back from it. Okay. Um, first thing is prayer. Going to God with all your faults, your cares, your concerns, your worries, your disappointments, your struggles. You go to God with that. Get into His Word every day. Every day. It don't take but five minutes, but you got to give them some time. And you got to make that, when you're in that situation, you got to make something positive out of it. You got to feed yourself with something that's going to change you for the better. Even in a relationship like that, you feel like your partner may be the one that's in the wrong, which they are. And we want to pray and ask God to change our partner. You ask God to change you. Because you are now going through some things and your feelings are all over the place. 
you're taking on some things that you may not have taken on before. And even if you have been in that situation, it may not have been with the same person or maybe it has. Ask God to change you. Ask him to have his way with you. Mm -hmm. Let him work it out for you. Where it is. The grass is not greener on the other side. Now, in some instances, the grass is greener if you are being abused. But when you're making a decision that you want to have your cake and eat it too, no, there's a difference. When you're being ab abused, you get out of that relationship. You don't need to try to hold on to that. No, because I made it. And it takes the person that you're in the relationship with to want to be changed, to recognize their fault. But sometimes you have people that just don't. They know what they're doing is wrong, but they're using it as um, you made them do it. If they say, I'm sorry, and I'll never do it again, you have a choice right then and there to make a decision on whether to get out or to stay. If at some point they say, um, if they say, you made me do it, mm -mm. no, don't even try to stay. Say good morning, everybody. Did you enjoy your birthday, Corey? Yes. Yes. Yes, my buddy. It's my baby, y'all. You my big boy now? You looking like a big boy, my mom. <laughs> Are you stopped up? You know you stopped up. See you later. Hmm? Mm -hmm. You go up front and watch the TV, okay? Is Jalen awake? Go see what Jay Bug is. He wants to turn my TV up. So, I've said a lot. In this video, 32 minutes, I didn't intend for this to be that long, but y'all know I get to talk about stuff and this is the result of it. So this has been on my face longer than 15 minutes. I am going to go and wash it off and I'm going to wash my hair and I will be back to show you guys what I decide to do with my hair. See this right here? I need to just cut it off. You see, it's short in the back. I need to just cut that off. So after I wash it, and I know it's going to grow up, I'm just going to go through and cut the dead ends off. It depends on how much it grow up, you know, if it really shows the definition between the new growth and the dead hair. So I can do this. I can pull this up and I can just clip that. Then I gotta think about what's on the side. So we're gonna see y'all. I'll be back y'all.